God has cut a covenant with man. I'd like you to have a look at, in your Bibles to Psalm 89, verse 34. This is what he said. It says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Isn't that amazing? Does anybody else think that's amazing? God said He will not alter it. Let me read it again. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my word, by my holiness, I will not lie to David. I want to tell you this, God will not lie to you either. What is said in this word is already established. He has, he has established a victory in your life. He has established healing in your life. He has established deliverance. He has established freedom. It's just waiting for someone to believe it. What makes a difference? What makes a difference is it's waiting there for somebody to lay hold of it, to, to believe it, to take it to, to himself. Jesus said, it is finished. I have paid the price. It is finished. I have paid the price. He paid the price in full, friends. He's delivered us. If someone uh, rang me and said, Neil, that new Ford Ranger diesel automatic, with the white one, <laughs> that you've been dreaming about. <laughs> Anybody else dream about things like that? Well, I just paid for it. It's yours. Somebody rang me up. I've been dreaming. Like a lot of people want victory. They want freedom. They want, they want you know, to, for God to talk to them. And, and, and all of a sudden, you know, somebody says, hey, Neil, I paid it. <laughs> it's yours. It's yours. Just go and pick it up. And, I said, and I'd say, but really, are you, are you tricking me? <laughs> uh, is this real? Have you really, really, really done that? See, that's how we approach God sometimes. Have you really, really paid the price of my healing? Have you really, really paid the price for my deliverance? Well, why am I here? Because you see, you haven't gone to pick it up. It's there waiting for you. The things of God, everything that God has said is yours, it's mine. But I can say, well, I'm not good enough or, or, or all these sort of things. But God says, no, just go and pick it up. And instead of, you know, grumbling and moaning, what we've got to do is we've got to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And, and go and pick it up because God wants you to have it. This person didn't, oh, well, in my imaginary thing, he didn't pay for my, that, that ranger, <laughs> Ford Ranger diesel automatic white one. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm relieving for revelation knowledge. That, no, no. I'll take one first. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't pay for it if he did not want me to have it. See, we've got to change the way we think. Jesus did not pay on that whipping pole for every disease and every sickness and everything that the enemy would do if he did not want us to be delivered and healed and set free. He did not allow himself to hang upon that cross naked, being despised and rejected and smitten, going to the very pit of Hades and paying an amazing price for our sins and for our transgressions and for everything else if he did not want us to have freedom. He said, it is finished. I have triumphed over him. I have made a show of him openly. He did everything possible to reveal himself to mankind. He did everything there to, to take us into a place. We've got to walk through it. We've got to, you know, that song that was singing about, he made a way that I can walk right through it. And friend, I want to tell you, I believe that the church that God is going to come back to, to call His bride, is going to find a revelation about who they are in Christ that's going to cause them to rise up above and triumph over every enemy that the enemy has ever tried to put into the church. But it's there for us right now, if we can get it. 
if we can lay hold of it. The other week I was uh, sharing there and, and, and I didn't finish and, and I want to finish that. I'm going to just highlight a few things that I believe were very, very important to us. And, and one of the things there that I want to share is that really God has a plan for your life and mine. Amen. God has a plan, and, but not everybody enters into that plan. The children of Israel, we're talking about them, how they forgot the great miracle power of God. And you know, in reality, the church can forget about the Savior, about the mighty anointing, about what God says. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He says, you know, we can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ever ask or think. He says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we are to condemn those things. It talks about that we are more than conquerors. And yet we can go through life defeated and, and in failure and defeat. But you see, God's Word, He says, He's not going to change it. Whatever's gone from His lips, He's going to make it come to pass. If we can just see that, then the children of Israel were delivered out of bondage by great miracles. And God, part of that miracle, uh, part of the coming out was going in. See, it wasn't something separate. God never delivered you from the kingdom of darkness just to leave you wandering around in a wilderness. He delivered you out of the kingdom of darkness to take you into a brand new kingdom, the kingdom of His Son. Into the kingdom of victory, Amen into the kingdom of, of, of triumph. He, and it's not a part, and God never intended to take the children of Israel out of Egypt just so that they could wander around in the, in the wilderness and eat the manna and drink from the rock and all those sort of things. His purpose and His plan was to take them into the promises. God's plan for you and for me is to take us into the promises. The promises of God are yea and amen. But you see, we can wander around too in, in negativity, failure and defeat if we don't say, well, I'm going in. I'm coming into the presence of God. I'm coming in. I'm going in. I'm going to start speaking differently. I'm going to start acting differently. See, if the children of Israel would have remembered, instead of looking at what they could see, the, the negativity, the failure, the, 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 the giants, the, 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 the wall cities and goodness knows what else, if they were to remember that their God delivered them out of a, a nation of a bondage by His great hand, that that same God that took them out could also take them in. And the God that took me out of the, the, the flesh, out of sin and bondage, that same God could also take me in. I don't know about you, but I, was, I didn't get saved till I was 27 years of age. And I was very, very much um, captivated by the world system. And if God could deliver me out of that, I want to tell you, He can take me in to whatever He wants to take me into. Do you believe that today? And it's a matter of changing the way we see things and the way we think and the way we are. We've got to have our minds renewed. We've got to, we've got to see how God sees. And God wants to deliver us and set us free in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? Amen. The children of Israel would have gone in, but they forgot what was going on. I spoke the other week about that man cannot name himself. What happens is either God or Satan will tell you who you are. The devil will tell you you've got no hope. He'll tell you you're a failure, you're a defeat. But God will say, hey, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And it's who we're going to listen to that's going to change your destiny. Who are you going to listen to? The Bible says you can have what you say. And I want to tell you that we've got to change the way we speak. Whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. See, we, mountains are kingdoms. There's a kingdom of this world that's trying to penetrate the church, trying to penetrate the minds of men and women. And we can speak to that mountain and we can tell that mountain that's trying to get around our brain, around our mind, to be removed and cast into the sea. We're not going to actually go and cast every mountain into the sea. That happened a long time ago when 
some great faith man came to Australia. He cast all the mountains. That's why the New Zealanders say, you've got no mountains in, the, in Australia. Now, because you see, we cast them all into the sea and they called it New Zealand. <laughs> no, joke, 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 joke. It's not actually a mountain, it's a kingdom. It's things that come to attack you that you can speak to those things and cast them into the sea and and get rid of them. How many people believe that? Jesus, in Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Proverbs uh, 6, uh, verse 2 says, you are snared by the words of your mouth. In other words, life and death are in the tongue. We're either speaking life to ourselves or we're speaking death. Faith-filled words will get you what you need. Faith-filled words. We have to be so careful how we speak. We are a body, soul, and a spirit. And if your spirit loses control, you'll be led by the flesh or by the natural man. Whoever is in control, spirit or flesh, will control your tongue. This is not a theory. It is a fact, a spiritual law. God never, ever, ever, ever did anything without He first spoke it. He said, let there be, if you remember last week, let there be light and boom. <laughs> it remembers a boom. You see, what I believe, what I really believe is if we can say, if we can somehow or other, even in, the, even in the trials of life, if somehow or other we can stand to our full stature and, and look at the, at the mountain of whatever it is in, that's in front of us and say, I am more than a conqueror, boom. <laughs> you with me? If you can speak to that sickness and somehow or other just stand strong and tall and say, by His stripes, I am healed. Boom. We've got to have the boom. It's like breaking through the sound barrier, but this is breaking through the negative barrier. The barrier of negativity that is that just so close to our heads, amen, that gets around every Christian from time to time. Friend, we've got to break those strongholds and we've got to reach out into the realm of the Spirit and pull down the truth of God because God's looking for a people. Do you believe that? God's looking for a people that will declare who He is and what He's done. You release faith in words. Jesus answered and said in Mark eleven twenty two, it says, have faith in God or have God's kind of faith. Let me, let me remind you of this. God would not ask you to do something that you were not capable of doing. He doesn't want a bunch of fools running around this country. He doesn't want a bunch of fools like going on and saying things. No, He would not promise you something if He did not know that it was possible to enter into it. He would not say that. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? Will he not bring it to pass? And friend, I want to tell you, all it's matter, it's a matter of stepping over the fence and getting into this other place where we stand there and declare and speak the word and the word of God will boom through the strongholds of the enemy and God will be able to bring down the truth, bring down the answer, whatever it is you need. It's been done before, it will be done again, amen. God would not ask you to do something that you weren't capable of doing. Jesus spoke to the wind and the sea, if you remember. He spoke to uh, demons, He spoke to dead men, He spoke to all these things and they all obeyed Him. And I thank God that Jesus said, these things that I do, you shall do also and even greater things than this shall you do because I go to my Father who is in heaven and I want to tell you, you can speak to circumstances and situations and I want to tell you they will listen and they will respond and they will do what you tell them to do. You believe that? I reckon that's pretty good. If only we could just stir ourselves. Stir up, stir up, stir up. I pray that we can stir up. I'm getting stirred. I, I, I'm enjoy- I read this, this, this message that I've been praying. I read this continually. I read it. We're going to have to get those, some of those uh, faith scriptures again that we can start to speak 
it out again and get hold of them in case you've lost them. You can speak to sickness and tell it to go in Jesus' name. You can speak to that demonic force that, 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 that worries you, troubles you. You can speak to it and tell it to get lost. You can speak to that poverty spirit that gets around your life. But you might be careful when you start speaking to it because God might tell you to tithe. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then it will go. Ephesians 5.1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. What that means, that means is to act like God, to talk like God. Jesus did that. Jesus said, I only do the things that I see my Father do. I only say the things that my Father says. Well, wouldn't that be good if we spoke about ourselves the way Jesus speaks about us. Read all the bits in red. This talks about you, talks about the church, talks about what you can do and how you can live above and not below. And that God wants you to be the head and not the tail. God wants you to have victory and not failure. Jesus didn't come uh, to set us free, to see us living in bondage. He wants us to be free indeed, amen. He wants us to be very, very free I don't know about you, but I, 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 I sense a freedom and a liberty. Anybody else sense that? Getting around our lives. It's a lot easier to speak. It's a lot easier to share. It's a lot easier to do what God wants us to do. So it'd be, be, be imitators. Act like God. Do what God does. Jesus did that. You can copy. Uh, we can copy our big brother and, and just say what he says about us. He's a good copier. Amen. I, I remember when we were in the Christian Outreach Centre there at Wombai and uh, we saw amazing, amazing miracles. The altars would be filled. Many, some of the, uh, you were, were there. But the altars were filled of pe with people coming out. We we're praying for them. We saw amazing miracles. But you know what Jesus, how Jesus prayed? And, and, I, and I, I'm, as I was preparing this, I realised, because I started writing them out. And, and I used to go around and I just because there's so many people and, and I'm not one for, you know, Heavenly Father, I pray that Brother John here, he's got this arthritis and Phyllis Diller and other things in him <laughs> and all this sort of stuff. And I, I, just, I just used to go along and just put my hand on their head and say, come out, <laughs> be loosed, be healed. And David Einstein used to come around behind me because he knew I didn't have the formula right. And, and, and every time I'd say, come out, he'd say, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Be loose, in Jesus' name. <laughs> and I don't know whether it was my come out or his in Jesus' name, but people got healed, amen. <laughs> but that's what Jesus would do. He just spoke to someone, he said, rise up, <laughs> pick up the bed and walk. Your sins are forgiven. People couldn't understand it. Because the religious people wanted religious things. See, what we've got to learn is we, we're, we're not to become religious. Super spiros. we just got to, you know, speak to those things. Come out! In Jesus' name. <laughs> or whatever. You know. Be loosed. So if I'm on the altar here praying and I don't get it right, you can just yell out, in Jesus' name. <laughs> I don't mind. God doesn't mind. <laughs> we just want to see people set free. We want to see people loosed. My great, my great dream is to see people set free, to see joy with their hands raised, running around this church, loving Jesus, amen. How many people believe it's possible Come on, we've got, to, we've got to push through and believe God and anything can happen. I, I honestly believe that there's something being built up in this place that anything could happen. I, I, I believe that God's going to surprise us with an amazing event, amen? Come out, be loose, rise up, walk. <laughs> Jesus, that's what you're going to speak. That's what Jesus is. I hear in Jesus' name that I... <laughs> Don't just act holy. 
Don't act religious. You know, words are containers. They carry faith or fear and they produce after their kind. That's the law. You, you can't go around speaking negative about yourself and expect a positive result. You can't go around saying all negative stuff and expect that God's just gonna somehow or other heal you. We've got to work with God. I was a builder, I loved building, but if I never had material, I couldn't build anything. I might have had the plan, I might have had the blueprints, I might have had all the stuff, but if I never had a bit of timber, I couldn't build anything. And God's got to have something. We've got to give God something to work with. We've got to give Him an atmosphere. We've got to give Him something, an atmosphere of faith that He can work on and work with. Words are containers, they carry faith or fear and they produce after their kind. Confession. The Bible says this, Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you deny me, I will have to deny you also. What, what that means that, that there is, you know, we've got the accuser of the brethren. How many people know there's an accuser of the brethren there? And I don't understand this. I really do not understand this. But somehow or other, Satan has got access to, to, to God's ear. Is that, is that reasonable to say that? <laughs> because you see, God is there and, and the accuser will say, you cannot do that for that person. You cannot do this. But, but somehow or other, if we're confessing Jesus, then Jesus said, I will confess you before my Father is in heaven. And so our confession, as we start to speak, God, you are the great creator, you are the healer, you are the deliverer, you are the provider. But everything that God is, you know what I mean? He wants to be. He just doesn't want to be our healer. You know what I mean? With a big banner up there, Jesus, you're a healer, but nobody gets healed. How many people know that Jesus wants you healed? He wants you delivered. He wants you set free. He wants to, he wants to pour out His Spirit upon us. And, and, but so what we do is if we confess Jesus, if we confess all that He is, He is my provider. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my fortress. He's my strength. He's all those sort of things. Well, then Jesus talks to the Father and He said, listen to those kids down there. They're confessing me and they're telling the world and they're telling the enemy or they're telling that thing that I am for them, I'm not against them. They're confessing me, they're saying that I am their healer. And so he then says, come on, Father, we've got to go down there and we've got to help those people. But if we deny him, he has to deny us. If we just keep talking about the sickness and the disease and everything that goes wrong in our lives. Confession, if we confess him. You see, my confession today is a lot of people, they say, when they ask me, how are you, Neil? I say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? Anybody else fearfully and wonderfully made? So the Bible says about me. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says that I am a new creation. Train yourself to speak God's Word. Ephesians 5, once, I read it before, tells us, uh, to be followers of God as dear children. Followers in the Greek means to imitate. To imitate. As a child imitates a parent. Ever seen a child imitate its parent? Anybody else ever seen that? If, you, if you're a smoker, you're smoking away there, you'll see your kid will pick up a stick and he'll put it in his mouth and he'll pretend he's a smoker. Amen? If your child sees you with your hands raised worshiping God, guess what he's going to do? I remember, and Hazel will remember this, that uh, Jody, oh, block your ears, Jody. When Jody was a little girl in the old, old days when we had uh, bench seat cars, how many people remember the bench seat cars? And, and you didn't have, uh, what do you call those, capsules, capsule things and all that, baby things, and, and uh, you know, we, they didn't have seat belts, nothing. And Jody, as a little girl, used to stand beside Nancy as she drove the car with her arm around her neck and Nancy would be driving the car. And Nancy was long, going along there singing a song one day, and she's singing this song, and all of a sudden she's, and, and of course Jody used to sing along with her. And all of a sudden Nancy just started singing in tongues. And, and Jody said, I don't know that one. 
And Nancy said, no, but you can know that one. And be imitators. And so Nancy just started to, to, to sing again in the spirit. And next minute, Jody's there singing in the spirit. Beside her, I was doing the thing. And Nancy told Hazel. And <laughs> so Hazel borrowed Jody. <laughs> Is that correct, Hazel? You can hardly remember. I can remember it well. And, and uh, so as that she could get Jody to sing and then hear her singing in the Spirit. But you see, imitators. And I, I believe that that's what God wants us to be. Paul said, be imitators of me. You know, we've got to, we've got to be imitators. We've got to do what Jesus did. We've got to do it how He did it. Amen. He, he always spoke the answer. He never spoke the problem. He, he, he seemed to, there's one thing that really, really separated Jesus from everybody else. And that is that he knew who he was. He knew who he was. Friend today, do you know who you are? You're a child of God. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sickness and disease. I'm no longer uh, pushed down by the enemy. I'm no longer there. God has planted a seed in my life. God has filled me with His Spirit, amen. He received me as His Son, amen. I'm a joint heir with Jesus right now. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are more than conquerors, amen? It's, it's do you know who you really are? If you know who you are and you start to imitate Jesus and walk through life. And friend, whenever he came to a situation, he came to a, a funeral and there it was and he just walked up to the thing, said, open up the lid, get out, boy. <laughs> In Jesus. No, he didn't say that, didn't he? <laughs> he knew who he was. There were blind people there. What do you want? that I might receive my sight. Receive. Friend, I want to say this. Can you see Jesus standing in front of you saying, what do you want? What do you want? Because that's what Jesus is. What do you want? What do you want? I I know what Frank wants. You know why? Because he's told me what he wants. He wants to get, he wants to have a voice somewhere. He wants to go out to the Philippines. He wants to preach the Word of God. He's got a vision. He's got a dream. Why? Because he speaks it. Will it happen? Yes, it will happen. Why? Because he speaks it. Oh, I'd love to go there, but I can't. Why can't you? Oh, because. No, no, I, we're, we're going to do it. Amen. We're going to do it because God, whatever you speak, whatever you believe, whatever he walked up to, whatever situation it was, he he didn't, he didn't, you know, come up to a a situation there where where there were sick people or there was a man by the pool that had been there for 38 years or whatever it was. He didn't look at that, come in there and say, oh my God, he's been there for 38 years. Oh my God. Give me an easy one. Come on, I've said this before. Don't give me wheelchairs. Give me just a little headache. That's easy. I don't want a headache, by the way, Lord. I don't mean, I mean, give me somebody with a headache, not mine. I haven't had a headache for about eight years. I've never had a headache. I used to suffer a lot with headaches, but somewhere or other, God has delivered me. Glory to God. Sure, Rabundi. So you have whatever you say. You got to, we got to. What are you speaking? What are you, what, just stand in front of Jesus and, and he's saying to you, what do you want? that I might receive my sight, that whatever it might be. I want this church to be filled with His glory. I want this pre- the presence of God to come down in this house. I want to see people set free. I want to hear the, the clang of chains as they drop off people's lives and as they hit the floor. I want to see sickness and diseases for, uh, leave people's bodies. I want to hear demons scream as they go out of this place, screaming hallelujah in terror. That's what I want, amen. I just don't want a religious holy church, bunch of religious people. Praise God, you couldn't be religious here. (laughs) What do you want? What do you want? Let God know, let him know and talk like his son because he wants to give it to you, amen, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Jesus always spoke the end result. Man, I've got to hurry. Spoken words, program your spirit or your heart uh, either to success or be defeated. Only believe all things are possible. Romans 10, 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. God word, God's Word carries the creative power of God in it. Let me say that again. God's Word carries the creative power of God in it, amen. God is, a, He said, let there be light. And those words that He spoke carry the creative power of God, amen. As he spoke it, there was nothing, there was no devil, there was no demon, there was no negativity, there was nothing that could stop the boom coming and, the, and everything that God said coming to pass. And I want to tell you what God said. He said, I'm going to have a glorious church. I'm going to have a people of power. I'm going to have a people who know my name. I, I'm going to have a people that know me. God, let me say that again. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. God's Word carries Everybody say carries the creative power of God in it. Faith comes when you hear yourself speaking what the Word of God says about your situation. Find out what the Word of God says about your situation and then start speaking it. Put it everywhere in front of you. Do it as many times as you can. Not what you feel or what the doctor says or what the bank manager says. Only believe, speak the Word of God. Proverbs 4.20 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart or your spirit, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Let me read that again to you. My son or my daughter, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to hear my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart or your spirit. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. I pray today that we will find the Word of God and it will drop into our spirit man and we will look at it and we will devour it and we will proclaim it in Jesus' name. In other words, I will not let the Word of God, which is the truth, depart from my eyes or my mouth. You can have what you say. Praise God. You can have what you say. Today we're going to come around this communion and we're going to remember you can have what you say. You can have what you say. My God, I'm going to allow your word to penetrate deep inside my heart. 